For me, transformation in our industry, in uh, news journalism, is the transformation that's I mean, it's been a long time that it's, it's been going on, last 20 years or so, effectively uh, since the advent of the internet and when things started to get really, really fast. And um, certainly in the last 10 years, you've seen that transformation um, really come into effect uh, when it comes to news journalism, insofar as the traditional funding models for, you know, for, for funding journalism, people buy a newspaper, you know, use that money with a bit of advertising money, and that goes towards journalism. That's kind of, that's dying a death and has been. And so what's been seeing, what we've been seeing in terms of transformation um, is people flailing around, trying desperately to find ways to fund journalism and, and to kind of stave off disaster for these big brands that they built up over a long period of time. Um, and I think, you know, the, the, the economic funding, you know, the funding model matters a huge amount when it comes to journalism um, because when you stop having that engagement with the reader where they're helping to fund what you do, you start to see the reader as just a pair of eyes because you've got to get your money from advertising. Um, and the problem with online advertising, as we all know, is you need a colossal number of pairs of eyes in order to make even kind of basic amount of money. So what you've seen is this complete sea change, this massive transformation um, from you know, uh, printed products, primarily, primarily printed products, which were funded in part at least by the readers, to uh, this model where you just try to get as many people as possible through to see free content, um, and then you try to monetize them with aggressive online advertising, which has become increasingly aggressive as we um, become increasingly kind of distracted and, we, and better at screening it and zoning it out. So in terms of transformation, it's been massive, and it makes a big difference because it also means that with this, um, this lack of investment in news journalism, uh, you're filling in the spaces of this massive digital space with other things as well. So with rehash press releases, with commercialised content, with insidious uh, advertorial that kind of you know, sneaks in and you, you don't realise you're reading it till halfway through. Um, it's been a colossal transformation, I think. At Delay Gratification, we definitely feel like we're swimming against the tide. When we launched uh, in early 2011, there were endless articles saying that print is dead. Uh, we thought that was absolute nonsense. Um, but all of these kind of colossal, long-standing print titles were going out of business or flailing and having a really, really tough time. Um, so we are swimming against the tide, uh, and I think I think it's working. I mean, it's not like a like an overall resounding success. I don't have a silver bullet, and I think you know the reality is that everybody's just trying to work out some sort of clever model that's going to you know going to fund what they want to do. Um, but I think that what I've seen in the last year is the pendulum really starting to swing back. I think that five years ago, people were still totally you know, in love with their smartphones, totally in love with what digital will do, um, and, uh, and kind of obsessed with apps. And I think now, what we've almost got is this digital fatigue. You know, after five years uh, of this kind of hyper, hyper speedy stuff, particularly when it comes to news, people actually just want uh, to step away from the white noise, and they want something that's kind of a bit more nourishing and in-depth and a bit less throwaway. So in that sense, I kind of, you know, I hope that we're kind of swimming in the right direction, even if that's against, you know, the, the vast majority of people. I think print is really, really special. I think print magazines have got a major role to play in the years ahead. We've seen this amazing renaissance of independent magazines in the last five years. Um, most of the big publishers have sort of stalled in terms of new print launches, but what you've seen is this incredible flowering of creativity as small fleet-footed pu publishers come and you know, move in and in between the cracks. Um, one interesting thing about print uh, is that you don't need to have you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of people buying it in order to make it sustainable. And what a lot of independent publishers are finding um, is that they can grow their business, they can invest in the sort of journalism that they want to do with a relatively small uh, group of, of followers and subscribers. Um, so that's actually really, really interesting. And, and you know, we're overwhelmed with digital content. We're overwhelmed with um, you know, things zooming through on our smartphone. There's something very special about that connection you have with somebody where you force them to take a screen break and engage in a lovely six and a half thousand word feature um, that they would never have, have kind of chanced upon otherwise. Brands are in a really interesting position insofar as they've got money. And almost nobody's got money. Um, and of course, you know, like journalism, the best journalism for years has been, you know, has been funded by advertising through brands. So it's not a new relationship. Um, I think what is new, perhaps, is the more insidious types of, uh, of advertorial and native advertising, which we're starting to see crop up, um, you know, funded by kind of aggressive and powerful brands that can buy their way into what you thought was your trusted source. And I think that's a bit scary. But I think brands, if they're smart about it and are playing it for the long term, have got a brilliant opportunity to create world-class invested content and to become really kind of trusted and respected for it. But I think that probably the key element of that is not to be not to be selling the whole time, which is yeah, kind of an obvious basic thing, but um, as soon as somebody's reading something and they think that there's 
an ulterior commercial motive, you've lost them. You've, you've broken that kind of bond of interest and of trust, and you know, you've actually done them a disservice. But intelligent brands who engage with really, really good content, yeah, absolutely, they can be part of this mad new kind of tumbled up, mixed up world where we're all trying to work out what to do, definitely, yeah. If brands really want to engage with an audience, then they need to find stories they can tell that that audience will care about. I mean, that's such an obvious thing to say, but actually that's not stories that they've somehow managed to crowbar together from some spurious you know, um, survey that they've had carried out by a dodgy PR firm, or you know, something about you know, where they're trying to co-opt you into some sort of nonsensical group and take sides about their product one way or the other. This is just, ma just nonsense. But actually looking at the stories that are within their company, within the broader industry, and within the world at large, that genuinely anybody down the pub is gonna hear and just be like, Oh, that's amazing. So yeah, absolutely. I would say you know, um, brands are very, very well pet, uh, set up to to invest in that sort of thing. They've got their pick of the people to produce it for them, and as long as they're not being sort of explicit about trying to sell stuff, and as long as they find those really cracking killer stories, then yeah, why not? They're on. They're onto a winner. You can never put the genie back in the bottle, and I think that there's just going to be increasing amounts of content, gigantic amounts, you know, everybody's producing, everybody has the means of production, very exciting, I suppose. Um, but also, we're gonna get much, much better at discriminating, at filtering out, and we're going to actually ask people to kind of filter things for us, I think. I actually believe that the future um, lies in niche. I think it's in engaging sort of small but committed groups of people who really care about what you do, or about what you're kind of producing, what you're saying, um, and, you know, um, and, and getting um, happy with the fact that you know, these super, super mass campaigns, mass appeals, mass media, um, probably that's not so much of a viable option anymore. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting, and I think there's going to be a divergence as well in terms of print and online. I think you know, we'll continue to be um, expecting our news, you know, fed to us, mm, this is particularly news, um, instantly, you know, effectively while it's happening, being live blogged, being kind of you know, streamed, immediately is happening. But I think that also opens up a really interesting avenue for print uh, that can take its time a bit more, you know, whether it's on a kind of weekly or monthly or quarterly basis, look back and give people kind of a more considered view rather than the first knee-jerk reaction.